Finally, we get a lot of questions on terrains from corridors. Um, creating design terrains from your corridors can be very valuable for a lot of reasons. Um, you may want to run drainage analysis or aquaplaning analysis. Maybe you want to create uh, final contours. Maybe you want to merge it with your existing terrain to create a final terrain for your project. So a lot of people ask questions, well, how do you, how do, you do this? Well, you know, if you've just got a single corridor, the process is really, really easy to do. You just enable the top mesh display in your corridor feature properties. You reprocess the corridor to, to create or draw the top mesh. And then using Create Terrain from Elements, you just create a terrain from the, from the mesh. So let, let's just show you how that works real quickly. And um, so I'm, I've got a terrain here. I'm going to go to the, the element info. I'm gonna look. You can see here I've got a feature definition on this terrain called um, conceptual okay so let's go look at the properties in uh, project explorer let's look at the properties for this feature definition so you can see here on this conceptual that my top mesh display is set to false right so what I want to do here is I want to turn that on I want to I want to display the the top mesh so I'm just gonna set this to um, I'm gonna set this to true Okay, and then once we've done that, we can reprocess our corridor. Okay, now before I do that, let me just bring up a cross section, and we'll just show you real quickly uh, what what this is going to do. So you can see my cross sections there. So I'm going to reprocess the corridor, and when it does, you'll notice this blue line will appear. So there's my top mesh. Okay, so it's it's actually being drawn over there in 3D, but I'm just showing you a cross-section representation to show what actually got got drawn. Now, once we've got this, we can create a terrain uh, from this. Now, uh, you know, if you um, if you go to my best practices project management, uh, one of the best practices is don't create this terrain in the corridor file. Um, because you just create overhead where it has to process the terrain every time it processes the corridor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this in a new file. So I've created a, a file called Proposed Finished Grade Terrain. I've referenced in the 3D corridor model. And you can see there it is. So now if I want to create a terrain from that, I just say Create from Elements. Um, I can locate that mesh, which is in a reference file. Just reset. Uh, I can do it as break lines, and our edge method is none for now. And you can see here, I'll just turn off my 3D corridor, and that leaves me the terrain in this file. And of course, now we can go use one of our boundary methods that we just talked about previously and control those extraneous triangles. And so, very quickly, I've been able from the top mesh display. I've been able to get a proposed um, uh, terrain from this uh, from this corridor, and as I mentioned, this could be exported out to do drainage analysis, contour analysis, you know, whatever. You know, it's just a terrain uh, like like any other. Now the question becomes, well, what if you have something more complicated, like multiple corridors with civil cells and things like that? which is a much more common scenario. Well, in these scenarios, graphical filters really become an indispensable tool to read those 3D linear features and create a terrain. Um, if you've got a good, a well-defined workspace and templates that we know things are certain, are drawn, going to be drawn a certain way, uh, every time when we use our template library and inside our workspaces, we can pre-built these graphical filters. Um, we can build them one time, they'll work over and over. You can save them to DGN libraries and propagate them across an organization. So here's a, a quick example of this. You can see here I've got a project with multiple corridors. I think I've got a civil cell out there. So I've got a graphical filter group called uh, Road here. And uh, I'm just doing a quick preview, and you can see it finds all the linear features that it needs to build the terrain for my whole project. So it's finding the limits construction, the edge of pavements, it knows what's a center line, uh, the whole nine yards. So I can say append a terrain, and it will automatically go out 
and build that um, build that terrain for me. And the neat thing about it is, for example, on the uh, limits construction, I I brought them in as a boundary instead of a break line. So if you do it correctly, you don't even have to worry about all this extraneous stuff because the actual definition in the graphical filter uh, will take care of that um, for you as as well. So you can see here we've just got you can see here my in conditions or my my limits construction. I had them as boundaries. Uh, if I if I had put them in there as break lines, right, then it would change everything. So for example, let's come back in. Uh, by the way, this is a static rule, and so it has to be updated uh, manually. Okay, so uh, we're just going to say update from source, which is the graphical filter. And this time, because I changed my limits construction elements to feature, I'm sorry, break lines, now you see you get all of these extraneous triangles. Okay, whereas if I'd have left them in there as boundaries, uh, I got a really nice uh, creation. So graphical filters, once again, are a, a very nice way to... Um, uh, to create uh, trains for your project uh, very simply and very uh, easily. One final little note and that is on image draping. Um, you have to remember if you want to drape an image on a terrain uh, you must have the material DC drape assigned to the terrain. Now, this is done through the element template. So in my case we've already talked about element templates here. I've got a uh, an element template called existing triangles. You can see that I've gone ahead and assigned a material called DC Drape. This is delivered with MicroStation. It's, it's called DC Drape dot palette. It's got one material in it called DC Drape, and it has to be assigned to a terrain before you can drape uh, imagery. So a best practice is this: even if you're not sure you're going to need draped imagery, go ahead and add the material to all your terrain element templates. That way, down the road, if somebody needs to drape an element, they don't have to worry about it. It's just if you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.